Workflow is a coordinated framework for conducting data analysis. It involves coordinated procedures for planning, organizing, and documenting your research, as well as cleaning, analyzing data, and presenting your results, and also archiving and backing up your materials. So why should you care about workflow? There are at least three reasons. Replication. Replication is essential for good science. An effective workflow allows others to replicate your work. Time. An effective workflow makes your work more efficient. And errors. And errors are inevitable. An effective workflow helps you find and fix them. Data analysis may appear to follow a linear, one step after the other process, which is at the end would arrive at a nicely packaged and coherent result. In reality, data analysis is a highly iterative and non-linear process and is better reflected by a series of epicycles in which information is learned at each step. It informs whether to refine or redo the following step and whether to proceed to the next step. In general, there are five core activities that can occur at different time scale. For example, you might go through all five in the course of a day, but also deal with each for a large project over the course of many months. And you'll see among those core activities are stating and refining the question, exploring data, building statistical model, interpreting results, and communicating results. Although there are many different types of activities that you might engage while doing data analysis. Every aspect of the entire process can be approached through this iterative process that Peng and Matsui call the epicycle of data analysis in their book. And this book is, by the way, is one of your required books for reading. The process starts with an interesting question. Often the question is aligned to the business goals and available data is clean and filtered. This may also involve collecting new data may also involve collecting new data relevant to the question. Data is then analyzed to discover patterns and outliers. Then you build a model and validate the model, often using machine learning algorithm. The model is often refined in this iterative manner. And the final step is to communicate the results. Of course, the results may inspire you to ask and investigate further question, and you go back to the first step. More specifically, for each of the five core activities, it is critical that you engage in the following steps. Setting expectations, collecting information or data, and comparing data to your expectation. And if the expectations do not match, then you revise your expectation or you fix data so that data in your expectations match. Let us go into more detail about what this three-step epicyclic process is and how you can apply it to your data analysis. Developing expectation is a process of deliberately thinking about what you expect before you do anything. The second step entails collecting information about your question or your data. And you collect information by performing a literature search or creating exploratory data analysis plots or doing sensitivity analysis or seeking feedback. If the expectation does not match, then you have to revise question or data or models. So let's look at this example. It's in your chapter two of Peng and Matsui book, which is your reading for this week. So your initial question is to determine the prevalence of asthma among adults. And it's because your company wants to understand how big the market might be for a new asthma drug. So CDC data, publicly available data, reveals that any new drug that was developed would target those whose asthma was not controlled with currently available medication. So you change, you modify your first initial question to a better question, which is how many people in the United States have asthma that is not currently controlled? And what are the demographic predictors of uncontrolled asthma? So you went through all three steps. First question of interest, then you check the literature, and then you sharpen your question. So to do all the analysis in our course, we'll be using several tools in this class. You'll have Python, R, and also GitHub. 